But honestly, I don't know what's happened. I feel like I've just taken a chill pill. <laughs> I've learned that not everything should be measured in terms of numbers. All right, I'm gonna give you a real talk discussion today. I'm gonna talk about our financials as well this year, how we're doing, how I'm doing on my Tudor Boss goal to reach 100K this year. And I'm gonna share with you the lessons I've learned along the way, how things have changed for me on how I actually measure success, which is quite interesting. Hopefully these learning lessons you can take for your own business as well, in terms of how you measure success for for yourself. So let's get into it. If we're gonna get deep for a moment, how I've always measured my own success is through the attainment of scores. When I was younger, it was through what kind of scores would I get at school? Did I get an A plus? No, well then you're not good enough, Lisa. Which yeah, like I think sounds really harsh, but that was really how I used to think of myself. And at the very end of high school, I did well. I got 97.2 out of 99.25, which if you don't live in Australia, basically it's like in the top 2% or something like that. I was pretty happy with myself, but very soon after, you know, once you actually head into real life, what is the equivalent of actually measuring yourself when it comes to the grades? For me, it was actually income because those are numbers. Like that's how I measured my own self-worth and how successful I was. And it's honestly just been like that since day one of me working. It's constantly, how do I make more money? Am I making more money? Yes, awesome, then I feel good about myself. Am I not making as much money as I want? No. I don't feel as good at that myself. And I feel like this year has been somewhat of a pivotal point for me on two main grounds. First on the LSG front, and then secondly on the Tudor Boss front. So if you've been following my journey, you know that in July last year, I basically set myself the goal of making 100K in Tudor Boss. And I have this list of milestones. Every time I hit that revenue number, I am able to go out and treat myself with whatever it is I've gotten there. And where we're at currently with only two months left in this year to make that 100K go is we're in between 30K and 40K. And so I think it's quite clear that I am not gonna make this 100K goal but I say this now with actually a lot of peace in mind. I think the previous me, like literally six months ago me, would have been like, why am I not getting there as fast as I want to? You know, we need to be making more money. Let's do more efforts in order to make more money. But honestly, I don't know what's happened. I feel like I've just taken a chill pill. <laughs> I've learned that not everything should be measured in terms of numbers. And the reason why I'm not gonna make this 100K goal is simply because I just do not have enough time in my day. When I set out this goal for myself, I did not comprehend and I could not comprehend just how much time and effort would actually go into making this amount of money for my secondary business, by the way. It's not even where I spend the majority of my time. So I think in practicality, it just would have never actually made sense. But I'm really glad I still set this goal because it's taught me a really valuable lesson in that it's not necessarily about that end goal. It's more about measuring your progress towards there. And I can tell you that I am now measuring my progress with so much more happiness and fulfillment and inner peace. And it's not just measuring, you know, 10K, 20K, 30K, the monetary side of things, but I'm actually realizing that I'm starting to measure my own self-development journey in this, my own learnings and my own lessons, which are actually invaluable life lessons, right? And how can we really put a measurement on that? So now instead of thinking, oh, I'm like 60K off the goal that I originally intended, what a disgrace I am, what a uh, miserable failure I am, I'm now seeing it as, wow, I've made 30 plus K in this amazing business. What have I learned in that time? And what are the next steps that I need to take in order for me to actually head towards that 100k goal. So it's more about the process itself. And I think a really good example to give you here is actually from Lisa's study guides, my other business, my main tutoring business. We're actually not going to reach our goal for Lisa study guides this year either. In fact, our revenue has dropped compared to the year before. And I've basically never had a year where our revenue has been lower than the year before. By the way, just as a side note, if you are a tutoring business owner or you're a new and aspiring tutor, who is looking to gain more confidence and reach your goals in business 
and start to feel more successful in your business, then you might want to check out my free 90 minute masterclass, the four step framework to a six figure tutoring career, because I have been there, done that. And I give you the top three mistakes tutoring business owners make, how you can avoid them and what you should be doing instead. So have a look at that link up there or in the description box. But hopefully you can see that I'm like a mentor for you who maybe is just a few steps ahead of you in this pathway. And as you can see, I'm still figuring it out too. And it's not always just an up and up and up for us either. And I think that's really important for me to share with you the ups and downs of business. Anyways, let's get back into what I was saying. But I'm realizing that it's okay. And the reason why I say it's okay is because this year, I really had to take my energy in the business, not in pursuing growth, but in training up my team. And so I was told that this is more so a consolidation phase that happens. And you know that pursuit of growth isn't necessarily going to be working in tandem with when you're actually training your team behind the scenes. So even though the goal was to make $800,000 in revenue this year in Lisa Study Guys, we're not gonna hit that goal. But what I'm measuring progress towards that goal is in the sense that at least my team is now being fully trained up, they're ready, and they're ready for that next stage into the next financial year where we can really start to scale. So yes, the timeline looks a little bit different, but that's okay. So on top of measuring progress towards a goal, I'm also measuring how fulfilled I feel when leading up to that goal. We've basically just talked only about work and how I defined success there, which is more in terms of measuring progress rather than the end goal, even though the end goal is important to have. But I've also redefined just how I measure success for myself, which I think is the most important takeaway of all. And something that I'd really love for you as people who follow me to be able to think about for yourself too. And if you're anything like me, and I have a feeling that many of you who actually follow me, follow me because I have these high achieving, high expectation tendencies, <laughs> which you probably resonate with, which you know to an extent work well for us, but then there's also the other part of it that can actually put a lot of pressure onto us. So what I'm thinking more of is how fulfilled am I feeling in my day-to-day -day life, in my work and also outside of that? Am I learning? Am I feeling challenged? And if there are yeses, then it's simple. This is awesome. I'm on the path of where I want to be and I'm heading towards it and it may come sooner, it may come later, but the point is that I'm making my way towards that goal. The third way that I've been thinking about remolding how I measure success is actually thinking about whether or not the decisions I'm making are actually aligned with my values. One of my values is balance. It's making sure that I have time, not only for work, but more importantly for family and for friends and for my hobbies. And so when I had created this 100K goal, I didn't ever think that it actually need to take that much more time out of me in order to get to that goal. But rather than endlessly pursuing that goal and just thinking about, you know, the recognition that I would get from it, the respect that I may get from others out there. What I really thought about was, does that actually align with my real values? And it's no, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. What I care is that balance for myself and feeling like I am able to juggle the important things in life for me, behind the scenes, behind the camera. And so that is essentially why I kind of went, Whoop, let's not worry about that 100K goal anymore. We'll still talk about it. We'll still aim to get there, but it's okay if I take my time because I would rather not spend hours at my desk working when I could be hanging out with my friends, when I could be reading a book that I'm really enjoying, when I could be, you know, cherishing a cup of coffee with my boyfriend. So I hope this gives you new light and a new perspective on how you can actually measure success for yourself. If you've watched all the way until the end of this video, thank you so much, I really appreciate you. And this is a topic I'm really passionate about and I really wanna share more of because I just know there are people like me out there or the past me or the, the me that I'm trying to outgrow now or the me that I'm, I don't know, anyways. Please leave a comment with the word success just so that I know you've reached all the way until this end of this video and I'd really love to hear your feedback on what you think of this video, how you personally define success as well because I'd really love to learn from this smart community that's here as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.